Um, Don, let's talk about 1956. What an incredible year for you as an individual playing for the Dodgers. You know, Ryan, I've asked that question a lot about that great year of mine, and it always comes to my mind is that the main thing is I didn't make the All-Star team that year. I won 27 and lost 7 that year, and right away people think you're on the All-Star team and you've done everything. I didn't make the All-Star team. My record was 9-5 and five at the All-Star break. Now, you don't have to be a mathematical genius to know if I was 27 and 7, I was 18 and 2 mm -hmm. the second half of the season. And nobody's ever done that before. Wow. Nobody's ever had a second half of the season or half of any season. 18 and 2. And I, the two I lost was 1 0 and 2 1. So I had a great, you know, sensational mm -hmm. second half of the season and was given the first uh, Cy Young Award and the MVP Award. Mm -hmm. I am the only man you're. You and your viewers need to know, you know, but your viewers need to know and remember, I'm the only player in baseball history, only player in baseball history mm -hmm. to win the Rookie of the Year, the Cy Young Award, the Most Valuable Player Award in his career. Nobody else ever done that. And it'll never happen again because, in my belief, uh, that uh, the pitchers are not going to get the MVP award anymore. Right. They're going to get the Cy Young Award, and the rest, mm -hmm. the other award is going to go to an everyday player. Right. You Probably as a pitcher, have to have a tremendous season, like go 30 and two, and with a I don't know, that, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen with uh, the closers and uh -huh. the, and the setup man and the innings pitch now. Uh, the pitchers looking to pitch mm -hmm. six or seven innings, then get out of the ball game. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, the the, the setup man and the closer is going to blow a lead, and it's happened before. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they'll ever have that year, but uh, but lucky, I, I hope they do, but I I don't believe they will. And another thing, you would, that was the first ever Cy Young Award ever given out, and they only had one. One didn't go to you know each league. Only one Cy Young Award given out. That was the first one, and you won it the, that the year. The first and only one. Now they have one for each league. Right. You're right. Right. You're right. You were an incredible batter, too. You hit uh, seven home runs in one year, established a record by pitches. I'm glad you pitches. mentioned that. I'm glad you talked <laughs> about that. I was wondering if you were going to forget about that because I'm proud of that. Right. Uh, 1955, I, my record was 20-5. and five. And I hit 359. I pinch hit a lot for the Dodgers and really helped them uh, to get into the uh, into the World Series. I never won a World Series game, so I didn't help in the World Series at all. But I did help them get to the World Series, and mm -hmm. nobody will deny that. Mm -hmm. And I, I I had a great year batting. I, I hit seven home runs that year. And, and an umpire named Augie Donatelli took two away from me that year that he said one went through the chicken wire in Ebbets Field. <laughs> And the other one, a fan reached over and the ball hit him. Uh, he interfered with the ball, but the ball hit him in the chest above the wall, which should have been a home run. And he took, a, took two away from me, I guess, so I should have had nine. Right. Um, you were here earlier this year in Torrance promoting Dodger Day. Uh, Torrance Dodger Day at, sta at uh, Dodger Stadium. That's going to be on May 22nd. Um, also a big celebration for the 55 team that won the World Series um, 50th anniversary that year. Um, how are you participating in that? I'll be involved in it. We're doing a lot of advertising on buses and uh, a lot on, on billboards. And the Dodgers are going to do an extensive uh, ad campaign and advertising campaign. And uh, we're going to celebrate that 55 first ever world championship team, although it was in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to celebrate that and they're going to do a lot. And I'm the only living player uh, out here except Duke Snyder. The rest of the guys, like Carl Erskine and Labine, them are in the East, and we hope that we'll get a lot of them to come out mm -hmm. uh, to be a part of that celebration. Wow, that's going to be exciting, and uh, it's going to be an exciting year for the Dodgers. Period. And let's talk about the Dodger history. Um, you were there, you know, in the early years in Brooklyn, and since they moved to Los Angeles, they've had equal success. Uh, the teams in the '70s, and, and um, how do you compare today's Dodger? teams and players with, with the old uh, teams? I can't compare. I, and I stay away from trying to compare because I feel that the players of my era were more fundamentally prepared to play the major league game of baseball. And uh, I don't think that the players today are fundamentally prepared the way we were. We went through the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. We went through all the training in Vero Beach and the training camp and all the things we had to go through. Uh, the players don't do that now. I, I, I'm very dismayed at the pitchers who I don't see running anymore in the outfield. They run on machines now in the clubhouse, and 
And I, sure, I just know. don't, I, I, I just don't think that that's a good thing to do. But that's the way they do it now. Mm -hmm. So I got to go with the changes that have taken place in all of our walks of life. I've got to go along with the changes that have taken place in baseball, financially, money, the money factor. Mm -hmm. God, I wish I could be playing today and have the forty, uh, you know, the, the wins that I had in 1955, 56. Uh, together, that, so I could have my agent or my manager. That'd be good for a ten million dollar contract. Well, I, no, that'd be a bonus. <laughs> the bonus would be ten million. I would get a seven or eight year contract extended over that period of time, and maybe for about fifteen million, you know, that I could I could talk about. You could have the Sandy Koufaxes, the Drysdales, and a whole lot of players who could negotiate, mm -hmm. and they could talk about their records. But I'd like to have those two years, fifty five, fifty six, together. And be able to go in to see Mr. McCord or see Mr. Deep at Dodger Dodger Stadium and say, now, I don't have to do the talking. You know, I had a, an agent and a manager, and they could do my talking for me. I just sit back and relax and just rake in the money. I'd be most happy, believe me, Ryan. If, if you could go back and do that, though, would, would that money spoil you like it does today's baseball Certainly, players? it spoils everybody. <laughs> That's what money's for. I, I've been with it and I've been without it. And right. I'll tell you, I'd much rather be with it right. than to be without it. Believe me, wow. there's no comparison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I talk to kids today. Right. Give them an education. Go to school. Learn how to read. Learn how to do whatever you're going to prepare yourself for to be somebody in this life. And mm -hmm. the doors are open for you now. Everything is not, not solved yet. Everything is not the way it should be. But it's on the way. Mm -hmm. I'm even dismayed that it had to even go that way. Why? Well, that's the way it was. Okay. But now we're changing that, and we're hoping that uh, we'll be successful doing it. Speaking of the kids, um, they're very important. A lot of the young fans, Dodger fans today are kids, and uh, many of the uh, viewers watching today are in high school and junior high. I mean, what uh, does, do you feel should be their input in baseball, and, and what should they know about Dodger history? Well, the history uh, of the Dodgers is a very rich history. If you go back, you go back years and years and years, but come up to the years of the Robinsons and the uh, Campanellas and Newcombs, and you come up to them, and, and then in the American League uh, with the Dobies and the Easters and the Pages, and you find out with the Mazes and with the Giants and, and those guys. Uh, we have made a significant contribution to, to our country and to our, and to our world, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of that, to have been able to be a, a part of that team. Mm -hmm. I got a chance. Uh, the Newark Eagles gave me a chance. The Dodgers gave me a chance in 1946. Branch Rickey signed me as the third black man to, to start a, a, a well, we started we started a, a revolution. Right. And that's what Robinson, Newcomb, and Campanella started. We started the revolution, and we were successful at it. So I, I I'm so proud of the rich history of the Dodgers because the Dodgers were the first. They were the first to do many things, and they're still being the first to do many things in changing the image of this world of ours, this country of ours, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just happy to still be a part of that, of that family. When people talk about Don Newcomb either today or 200 years from today, I mean, what do you want them to be talking about? What do you want them to uh, reminisce and, and, and know about Don Newcomb? I just like them to, to, uh, to remember that, that Don Newcomb was a man who cared about young people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did a great thing for our country by standing up and saying, I, I'm Don Newcomb, an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And then I got involved with the United States government and I traveled all over the country, all over the world, talking to young people about how alcohol uh, can hurt their lives like it did my life and my career mm -hmm. and, and what they need to do about it and be aware of it. Thanks a lot, Mr. Newcomb, for joining the Sports Desk. And this has been a very special edition of the Sports Desk with Dodger legend Don Newcomb. I'm your host, Ryan Harris. And remember, don't just have a great day, make it a great day.